Good morning and welcome to Moments with Melinda. My name is Melinda Moulton and I am your host. And today I have with me Peter Halby. Hey, Peter, how are you? Hi, Melinda. I'm good. Nice to be with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me tell my viewers a little, ba- a little bit about you. Peter is the co-founder of Zeno Mountain Farm. He's a guitarist, father, weather enthusiast, trash collector, bus driver, and surfer. Peter and his brother, Will, both UVM alumni, received the Fenn School 2017 Distinguished Alumnus Awards. Zeno Mountain Farms' mission is to support lifelong friendships between people of diverse abilities. The camp rejects the binary opposition of able and disabled. Does that sound correct? Sounds great. Yeah. I've always had a problem with with um, with the word disabled. Mm-hmm. And I was really glad to see it on to see this in your website. Um, so thank you for that, because I do not believe that that human beings are dis anything, let alone disabled. Yeah. You're just you're just abled in a much more different way. Yes. I mean, I think we always want to you know, certainly in our community, look at people um, for all the wonderful things that that they can do. Um, and so often in the disability world, it's it is yeah um, things you can't do. So I've been using the word a lot neurodiversity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. They just think differently and in many ways so much better. And yeah. and there's a hey, level. I mean- yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it is it's society that is that has messed this up and has has limited people and limited our thinking around individuals. And uh, and we we certainly want to break that open and, and show the world um, kind of this untapped resource that that is in the disability world. It's like the, the uh, some of the most talented, creative, beautiful, wonderful, caring, kind, um, innovative people I know, um, you know, have disabilities, but like it's like they're not defined by their disabilities and it's just like it's almost like one little part of their life but it's like it becomes the whole thing that's how society looks at them and it's it's so wrong that's right they're 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 oftentimes pushed in the shadows so i want to i want to tell my viewers as we're speaking with peter Halby, who's the co-founder of zeno mountain farm um that you can go to their website which is www.zeno z-e-n-o mountainfarm.org and visit their website. It's playful. It's informative. It's lovely. Um, I just, I had the most fun just exploring your website. So thank you for that, Peter. Great, great. So let's start at the beginning, because that's always where I like to begin. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you share a little bit about your childhood and where you grew up and what your childhood was like? Sure. Uh, I grew up uh, in a family of, of three kids. I'm the youngest uh, outside of Boston in Concord, Massachusetts, uh, you know, wonderful, uh, childhood, uh, but very kind of, uh, I didn't do a lot as a child outside of my own little community. Um, and I think the big moment for me was as a teenager, I started working at a, at a camp for people with disabilities, like as a young kid, like 15, um, and, uh, and it was a real mind opening um, experience where I, I kind of kind of got real responsibility for the first time I was caring for somebody um, at that stage who had cerebral palsy and, uh, and I was, you know, truly responsible for somebody else. It got me out of my head, which I think a lot of, um, at least me, when I was that age, I was, you know, it's like, whatever was me happening to me. And like this, this like expanded my horizons. It changed the way I saw it. Um, individuals that I had all these preconceived notions about, um, as many of us do, about folks with disabilities, and uh, and it was a beautiful experience. And I and I have to re- reflect back on it a lot because as a as an adult, um, some gosh, thirty years, thirty five years later, I'm still doing it. I'm I'm living in the disability world. It was all sort of from that early early experience. Um, um, where my mind was was changed in a great way. Fascinating. Um, my mother's best friend, uh, Mrs. Post, had a daughter, Susie, who who um, was disabled um, and was in a wheelchair and couldn't speak. And two days a week, my mother would take Susie, bring Susie to our house, and help take care of her. And 
Mm -hmm. I'd help feed her and um, in order to alleviate Mrs. Post's burdens. And she had four other children. She had five kids. And so I very, so I get that. I so get that. And I honor you in that. Was there, would you say, um, who would you say was your greatest inspiration that moved you into the work that you're doing today at Zeno? I don't know if it's an individual, but it re it really was this, this world that, that I, i discovered in my uh, with the dis in the disability world like i there were so many people so many lessons and so many sort of um different ways of communicating moving um experiencing everything both mundane day-to-day -day, having a cup of coffee to trying to go skiing to do something creative um artistically or you know with with movie making or it, it just every every angle of life was was altered and made more creative when it was done with with uh you know folks with disabilities and folks who do all these things differently um so i it was just sort of that collective experience of just like keeping on like it was like everything that we tried i mean when i was doing it as a young kid and then when I, we started running our own programs and it was almost like everything we did when we had this lens of understanding and, and um trying to get the best out of people it, everything was enhanced um it, it was it became better it was made greater it was made greater yeah so yeah. so so talk talk to me a little bit about the holby brothers yeah, uh, I've got an older brother, Will, um, who's been on this journey with me, along with with uh, with my wife and his wife too. But uh, but Will and I were, you know, grew up, uh, you know, really really close. And uh, and then we would say we sort of we drifted away a little bit in his sort of post college years, and then we came back together in this love of um, trying to start this camp. So we 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 found this this dream property together. Um, with our with our partners um and that has brought us close together um and and we're i mean we're deep in it we're we meet every day and your your family uh, i mean it's a family it's a and you've been in and and you're the younger of the two and were there only two brothers in the family yeah we have an older sister who's who's uh who's wonderful too but it's it's you know it's interesting talking to other folks who run businesses with um you know a, with a brother um and there's a lot of uh, people, you know, a lot of folks are like, how the hell can you do that? Like, that seems so impossible. And it has its challenges, but I would say it also has this like um, the reward of that. Well, we do, we complement each other, but we also, um, you know, we have this like trust and understanding, like we are, we're in it and I, and I can, you know, we can communicate really well and, and then, you know, and then we have our partners involved too with, you know, it's, it's my wife and his wife. So like, there's a real family dynamic. It has complications, sure, but it, there's lots of beauty. And, and I think we're, we're able to be really productive um, in a really wonderful way. But, but you, we also, work on, you, you, know, you also were raised with love in your families. So let's, let's, let's move on to the work that you have dedicated most of your life to. And that is Zeno Mountain Farm, which is located in Lincoln, Vermont. And you are the co-founder, along with your wife, Illa, and your brother, Will, and his wife, Vanessa. Talk to us about what gave you the inspiration and vision to create a most magnificent place for people with and without neurodiversity and other marginalized communities. We, you know, as as we had sort of been in the, a lot of us, we were all in the field of disability. So my um, my wife was, was and still is an OT. Um, Will, my brother, was a special ed teacher. Um, Vanessa was getting into adaptive horseback riding. I was in the, I had moved on to doing adaptive um, sports. So we were in this world, but we always were like, someday we should bring all our ideas together and and find sort of the dream place um, where we could, you know, plant our roots, have a have a property, a real home, and and sort of grow grow community um, out of this home that was that was the take on the farm it was like our, and, and initially we we're like oh we should we should have a real proper farm um but of course running a farm is an incredible task and it's so much work and i and uh and maybe maybe as we keep growing we will get a proper farm but it really was about the far the community aspect of it all um and you know vermont um i went to to uvm fell in love with vermont um and it was uh you know will and i were both like that this is the place like vermont is the place where we can do this um 
And we were so fortunate um, in 2008, there was property available. I, I look around now, like it's it would be almost impossible to find any place right now. Um, but we did, we found this dream, dream place. We're on top of a mountain um, in central Vermont um, with incredible like, views forever, like Adirondacks, Green Mountains, Lake Champlain. Um, it's stunning. So we knew we this is a place where people would want to come back to. It's so inspiring to be here um, and where we could create um, lots of lots of wonderful communities. So so share a bit about the history of Zeno because it started back in 2005. Yep. Yeah. So we um, got into the camp idea um, prior to finding this home where we were we would just say, let's let's bring a group of our friends together and do something creative or something active or adventurous. And we did all sorts of things. So like we uh, we would go to, um, my brother was living in Los Angeles at the time. And he was like, well, everyone makes movies here. We should get everyone together and and make a movie, make an original movie. And, and you know, we it was easy for us because we were in the world of disability. We had knew tons of people who would be into that idea. So we just would do it and just get together and, and all we would stay in Will's um, apartment and bring in bunk beds and mattresses. And we would all just kind of live together and make a movie. And then and those movies kind of kept growing where it was just like we would we would show it to people and people, this is so cool. What are you going to do next year? And be like, well, we'll do something different and, and better. And it just we kept snowballing. So the movie theme became exciting. And then we would also do camps down in Florida where it was it was because I was in the adaptive sports world. It was like, oh, we should bring folks down to Florida and do these do some windsurfing and canoeing and all these sports. It was like all these adaptive sports that we've been doing up in the Boston area down there. And so we would do that. We went on road trips we we were part of um a whole movement of starting camps in mexico and guatemala and like really adventurous things that just sort of kept popping up and we just kept on like going for it and so we over the years collected we have lots and lots of friends um and we were always like okay someday we should find the real poem like because but it was like you know i was living in hotels or so does rvs or whatever it's like okay we need a home um and that's how vermont Kind of grew. And what year was that that you settled in Vermont? 2008. We we uh so the four of us um had this where it was before we all had kids, and we said let's just spend September. I mean, and drive around Vermont and look for something beautiful that could happen, like where we'd have space. And um, so it was a great like even if we fail, it's like oh yeah, it's a great project. Like drive around Vermont on the month of September. I mean, come on. Um, so we rented a place in Goshen, Vermont, and this, and uh, and we drove all around um, and found this place in Lincoln. And right away, um, we we're like, yes. Wow. Amazing. So you mentioned in your, you know, in in your uh, website, you talked to us about social equity at Zeno and why this is so important. Can you talk a little bit with our viewers about this? Love to. Um, yes. Yeah, so, well, a big thing for us was that because we were working in the disability world, right? It was always under this premise where, um, you know, you would have the, it's the teacher and the student and the teacher would be the non-disabled person and the student would be the disabled person. It would be, you know, the staff, the client, like it was always this sort of dynamic where it was, where people with disabilities were around paid staff, which is, I mean, it's part of that world and we get it, um, but, in our mind, it was like we 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 wanted to bring people together on sort of this even plane because that way you could have genuine friendships between people with and without disabilities, um, and there wasn't sort of that natural hierarchy there would be when there's somebody paid in the dynamic. Um, so we kept playing around with the idea, like how could we do this? Like if we want brought a group together to do something, well, you you could either pay everyone the same or you just you don't pay anyone and then you figure out ways that people you can bring people together um so that's that's how we got to that model and so what's the know, model do you pay everybody that? or does everybody not get <laughs> we don't we, yeah, we don't it would be amazing to pay everyone that would be an, a, a huge budget no we just we just say people come um and it and in a way it acts kind of like a like a vacation or you know people do take time off from work they use they use their vacation days um they you know, some people are able to just do it, um, all sorts of different reasons. And sometimes we'll support folks to be able to come and do it. But, you know, in the end, when everyone is at a camp or a retreat that we do, everyone's there 
in for the same reason and it's to support each other and and the beauty that happens with that is that everyone is has a chance to contribute to the group equally and we and we and that's a real important thing is that that everyone has a job at at Zeno and and it makes everyone matter to the whole process of everything we do and and all jobs are important whether it's driving the bus sweeping the floor cooking the dinner take you know helping someone to the bathroom you know everything it's like it's vacuuming like it's all those all need to get done and we just figure out how to do it and everyone's sort of celebrated for what they do and um you know it's like it creates this world where everyone matters and then so often in the disability world that is not thought about it's like literally it's it's thought about as sort of care um versus like contributing it's well per personal care assistance right care yeah which yeah. are important but in this environment volunteers volunteer their time they don't get paid and it's and it's and it's an experience it's a moment yeah lives with great return in investment that doesn't have to do with the greenback dollar sure. and, and, it's, so and what's so exciting is that it happens that everyone whether you have a disability or not kind of is there for the same reason and you're there for a community and there for each other and that's like so it's just so wonderful for me to like be be in that in that group and i think everyone who comes back does that for that reason of like it's just this great feeling like to be in a real productive creative innovative community um it's, so, it's so is, there, is there a boss who puts out the list of duties and stuff there must be somebody who coordinates the yeah work. yeah, is yeah that we you, do. You, that, do you uh, do yeah i mean i i definitely as like the director look you know make sure systems are working whatnot but but a lot there's a lot of leadership that jumps in so someone we call it contributions that example where like we organize um like everyone gets their name on it on a uh paper uh a clothespin and like and then there's all these jobs on this board and we just like be like all right steve you're in charge of and it's like like djing the dishes you know like or like you know cleaning the bus all these things. it's like it was just like everything that needs to happen right maybe, and they're all maybe, um, maybe our world should be run this way i mean what a fun i'll tell you it's really fun it's such um, a great concept. So how do folks volunteer? To my viewers out there who are learning about Zeno and about you, Peter, how, how do they get involved? How, how can they get involved? Um, well, it's always just kind of reach out. It's always like kind of a personal like Zoom like this is like kind of the first first step. And, you know, people find us in all sorts of ways, whether they they've seen one of our movies or they see us out and about, you know, but for, but for my viewers who who maybe have never heard about Zeno Mountain Farm and have never met you, is it is the best way to reach out is to go to your website? Yeah, go to the website. Um, we'll we'll uh, I'll, I'll send you some things where you can get to know us more, and then we'll set up a Zoom call. It's usually the the process because it's you know to come to camp, we all live together. It's a pretty you know intimate experience, and we sort of want to make sure it's a great match. You it's know, a good all. fit. So to yeah. my viewers out there, or for or for people who want who want who have neurodiverse family members who, who yeah. might be involved, the best way to get involved with Zeno is to go to their website, which is www.zeno z e n o mountainfarm dot org, and it's a fabulous website, and that's how you can get involved. Because I bet there's a lot of people out there watching this show who may not have heard about Zeno, and really? might want to get involved. So that's the best way to do it. Now, can you share with us, Peter, a few stories about folks who have been involved with Zeno over the years? Share a couple a story of a person or a couple people and what their what their experience was at Zeno or is. Sure. I mean, I think one of the beauties, you know, for me is that we we invite people back year after year. So it becomes this sort of lifelong connection, friendship. Um, and because I've been in it for, I mean, yeah, 30 years. Plus, like I, 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 and I've known folks for that long. Um, there's, uh, you know, just a rich history. Anybody you know for that long, like it's, it's just a beautiful thing. Like, I mean, we all have sort of these. I mean, hopefully, everyone has lifelong friends. Like that is, that is like a, a real gift to 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 people. Um, and so I, I guess I, I've really enjoyed sort of uh, 
get knowing folks and then like seeing how seeing their growth and seeing like maybe where I can can say like hey I I I think you can do that or I've seen you do that before like you could do this um so I mean and I you know and in the it it so often doesn't exist in the in the disability world right a lot of times people have pods of friends but but maintaining that throughout one's journey of life it's it's hard like people move in and out of group homes people move in and out of workspaces people maybe have a great um high school thing which ends at 22 but like there's typically not like high school reunions and bringing the groups back together again and like that's i think where xeno can have its have its place where it's like we are this thread that's like going through folks lives i mean individual stories uh gosh i mean there's uh this wonderful guy aj who um lives down in georgia and he uh he's got um he he was his dream was to become an actor um and he's he um had has cerebral palsy down there and he he's like never had any opportunity to act or do anything other than outside of high school he reached out to us and was like i really want to act i'm, I'm an actor like please please and fine, we sort of took a chance and said like okay aj we'll we'll figure out how to get you up here and he came to vermont um and he uh, just be is this amazing, amazing man and and a real actor, like loves the craft, loves like learning about camera angles and lights and 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 just diving in so deep. Um, and we shot a Western movie with him, and he was the star. And while we were shooting that Western, um, a documentary film crew made a movie about it. And he sort of became the star of of the film, like his journey of being for the first time in in a real movie um and that that documentary ended up being on hbo and, and aj sort of became famous in, in this way for being an actor when like being an actor was always his dream so that's that's, that's a good one and what a great story so i mean xeno provides the opportunities for everyone to develop their talents um and and also xeno's value is being based on folks feeling needed and wanted mm -hmm. and, we, and you state that that is a human right and um, and you provide that at Zeno, uh, that everyone that everyone feels that they are needed and they are wanted and they are they're revered for their talents and not looked upon as having as being disabled. They are abled. Yeah, yeah. It's like everyone has to get up and do, and there's shit to do. You know what I mean? Like you got it. And I think that's a human right. I think you, we have to have that. Otherwise what you know yeah you have to have a sense of purpose and, yeah. and that doesn't happen oftentimes because you have no because it's care okay we have to care yeah. for you and people aren't people aren't given the opportunity to show who they are and be who they are and you do that at Zeno where everybody has chores everybody gets up they have a responsibility they're they're needed they're part of a whole so right. um, now let's move on to this uh important part of your work is how does Zeno Mountain Farm support its operations and if any of my viewers would like to donate to support your work, how best can they do that? Is that again through through yeah. uh, the website? Through the website, reach out to me. I'd love love meeting folks interested in what what we're doing. Um, and yeah, we we were we're a nonprofit. We we have to raise money to do what we do. Um, we have a beautiful network of friends um, who support us. Um, who you know, I think we have a nice way of sort of sharing our story a lot of times through, through our art, you know, we put on a big musical production in the summertime. We put on a big, uh, we do a, a dance marathon, which I would always pitch, which happens in the fall. I tried to get you there, Melinda, but next year we'll get you there. Next year um, you'll get me there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we'll make it that's, that's really fun. We're all our different communities. I love to dance and I want to bring, and I know Rowan loves to dance. Okay. So I'm going to bring him with me. Now films, Films do not often include people with neurodiversity or with disabilities. And you just talked yeah. about uh, the fellow who was in the documentary, but your films are by and include your campers. And the films are about pirates, time travelers, and Zac Efron and people, and, and people love your films. So are you working on a film right now? Or are you planning one for the summer? Yeah, well, our last film um, was called Best Summer Ever. And that was an original musical. Um, and the most inclusive well we've people have said in in the world it's the most inclusive film to say disability inclusive film ever made we had people on all sides of the camera um in all aspects of it um with disabilities and that were really i mean we're it, it, it and that added to the whole thing right it's like it's how 
we created um, what what we made, and and the movie has been really successful. And it's streaming and, and, on Hulu. Yeah, it's on Hulu. It premiered Best at Sound Five. Best stream- summer ever. Best um, summer ever streaming on Hulu. I mean, let, let's let's everyone go and 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 watch that film. And people, all from people, Vermont, yeah. All from Vermont. For people to see your films, is it best to see them on your website? Because I know you've got them up on your website. Yes, they can certainly go there and watch it. And uh, and you can watch all your films. A lot of your films, most of your films are on your website. Yes, you can see that. That's sort of what we were talking about earlier. You can see like our our journey where we. I mean, they were so silly back in the day, where we're like it's like handheld cameras doing like some cheesy soap opera to. Of, you know, becoming more pro and 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 uh, and, and all that. But on Hulu, now on Hulu and now, now on Hulu, I know it's I mean, long way. But it's it's, it's you know, I would say that it's it's uh, it is this untapped resource. I mean, we 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 know that like it is. Um, I, I mean, you talked about how disability is not portrayed in the movies, and you know, it's twenty percent of the po- twenty five percent of the population, right? And it's all, less than one percent of disabled characters on the screen and then certainly when you do see it it's usually played by somebody who's non-disabled it's usually done in a real like inspirational way or like a real like villainous way um there's and it, and it's it's shaped the way the world sees this population right and it's such a large population um so it's super i think important for us to make these films that just have people being people not being you know, disabled, like it's like literally like it's like the mechanic at the store or the the guy who's got the girlfriend who, you know, whatever, like it's just people. It's like people being um, people who happen to be. Yes, because it's all the times it's, it's like, oh, how did you get in the wheelchair? Tell me about that. Like, you know, oh, you must be like, it's like that's what it's all about when it's just like it's one aspect of somebody's life. It's not. The whole I love thing. the fact that in the Barbie movie, they had a Barbie that was in a wheelchair and I thought it was right. fabulous and she was out yeah. No, we need we need so much more of this. Yeah, yeah, because so the world's more. missing out. That's what I say. The world is missing out. That's so true. So you call Zeno Mountain a farm, but it's not a farm, right? You don't not yet. You're not farming. Not yet. We're working, working on it. And and on your website, you have a Xenogram. What what is that? <laughs> we were trying to it was we were trying to play on on Instagram and just and say that this was the place to go see um sort of what's what's going on with Zeno was like that was our so we called it the Zeno grant but that's do, it do people do people ever just go up to the to the camp and just drive up to visit you do people ever drop in or is it by appointment only or how does that work yeah it's yeah it's we love to I mean we love visitors but yeah it's, we should give you a proper tour and and uh you know right, part so- of the, so people, when somebody shows up and I, I mean, it's not sort of a, like that kind of open. Not a drop in. So, so for my viewers, um, I suggest again that you go to xenomountainfarm.org to the website. And uh, if you're interested in getting involved in any form or fashion, reach out to Peter or um, the folks up there to get involved. Um, so ta- so you have camps and retreats and are you, are is, you're not active now. You're only active really in the warmer months is that so no we're we're year round and what what started as just in folks in the disability world has expanded to um what we we have said is folks with um isolation like any any group that is experiencing any sort of form of isolation and needs community we would we would welcome and want to work with as you know so for us it's it's grown into a chronic illness retreat um a veterans retreat uh folks in sobriety um and uh t- yeah that's I saw that's- that I saw that you did a veterans uh, group and people who are mm-hmm. looking for sobriety so you're expanding more into other areas of yeah. of human need and human character and um so you're you're a year-round organization we are. Yeah. It's almost every month of the year we have something going on. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Vermont offers wonderful things to do year round. Certainly that we, we partnered with the folks over at Vermont adaptive and do all these ski camps, which are really, really fun and dynamic. And then the winter time also is a, is a nice time to come up and do things more, um, you know, quieter like you can do some art projects you can do um some sort of wellness healing kind of things and uh you know it's it's a beautiful people can find out about that by going to your website you have that on your website yeah 
Yeah, they, we do. And it's all, and it's always like, I mean, if you are somebody in the cancer community or chronic illness community, just reach out to me with that sort of highlight, you know, like, oh, I'm interested in this one. And then it, it always becomes a conversation. And so if people um, want to book retreats, is that, can they do that as well? Can they book the retreats or you just manage and do the retreats? Yeah, we're, we're running all the things that we do. Yeah. And well, sometimes with, with partners. So the, the, like the cancer one, we, we partner with somebody, the chronic illness one, partner with someone, the veterans we do as well. The, all the, the disability focused ones we run just ourselves. Well, you know, I've come to the end of our show here, Peter, and I want to send out a very enthusiastic bravo to you and your family and all of the friends and campers who have come to Zeno Mountain Farm. And they found love, support, enthusiasm, creativity, joy, and purpose. The mission of Zeno is one that is so needed for a most gifted and important group of our society who often are left in the shadows. You and Zeno have brought so many into the light and given to them the personal glow of accomplishment and self-love. And thank you for being on my show and for being who you are. Peter Halby, I really appreciate this time with you today. Thank you, Melinda. That's beautiful. Thank you. Wishing you a happy holiday. And um, I hope to see you soon, my friend.